Okay, I think we can do it this time. Welcome to Deep House with Larry White. I'm Larry White, and I'm standing here in the Sam and Alfreda Maloof Historic Residence in Altaloma, California. Uh, I worked with Sam for about 29 years, and uh, he was a good friend, and I consider myself part of the family. Um, I'm presently working with uh, the Maloof Foundation as a resident artist, and um, what I'm going to be doing in this series of events is exploring in a more personal, intimate manner uh, the collection that Sam and Alfreda amassed over a 60-year period. It's an amazing collection of about 3,500 pieces, and so we'll pick out some of the more special pieces and uh, really uh, have a deeper look at them. Uh, I'm accompanied today by Lauren Verdugo. Hi, uh, I'm Lauren, and I started working at the Maloof Foundation when I was 15, volunteering early on in 2012, and it soon developed into being an intern, and then later um, helping assist with the educational programs, and then working with Larry White to build the education center that we now do workshops in. And this segment hopefully will uh, give you some ideas as to what uh, Larry and I love about this place, and we hope that you'll come back on a tour and learn more about the place. I was uh, Sam Maloof's first paid employee back in 1962 as a young art student. And uh, he mentored me and uh, gave me my um, push forward in life, uh, which I've always been grateful for. And uh, now Lauren is working with me as a apprentice, and I'm able to pass on that energy he gave to me to her. And uh, so we're going to have a good time going through the house and looking at these uh, wonderful pieces that we find here. So Larry, you were talking about some earlier pieces um, that you were going to show us. This right here seems to be one of the earlier uh, sets, these, these chairs and this table here. This is a key piece in the collection from my personal perspective, because when I first came to work for Sam, um, I was used to eating my lunch out in the grove or on the street row out by the street. And one day after about a week, Sam invited me to come into the house and have lunch with him. And I was just blown out by this beautiful piece. And I can't tell you how many meals over the years I've had on this table. So it's a very fond memory, uh, source of memories for me. I heard uh, that uh, a president has actually eaten here with uh, Sam President, Alfreda. president uh, Carter and Rosalind are here uh, on several occasions. We had dinner with them, yeah. And so Sam, very quickly through the 50s, uh, migrated in his sense of design, trying to find a personal language, which he did accomplish. And uh, so this table here was made in 1960. So it's kind of the end of that decade and, and that transitional period. You'll notice that there's cork on the top. Sam loved to use cork throughout uh, the 50s on all kinds of pieces, uh, coffee tables, dining tables, desks. And um, it's a, it was a fascinating, um, uh, uh, product to use at that time. Designers were using them for floors and walls and everything. Uh, this particular table, uh, I helped Sam build probably four or five others in the early 60s up through 65 or so. He continued this design. Basically, uh, the court came in two feet by three foot segments, uh, rectangles, and we literally nailed these onto a piece of Douglas fir plywood. Nothing extraordinary. Um, and uh, he would have me nail the, the cork on after we put glue on and uh, nail it on with little tiny brads. And then I would have to come back with a, a nail set and punch all the heads down so they didn't shine. Uh, so they were buried in the cork. After that, then he went in and put these splines in to cover the seams between the cork panels. And what I love about this table is the fact that he left this radial pattern and rather than bringing these all the way in. The other thing I uh, noticed a few years ago, which I had never noticed before, was Sam put cork plugs across the seams here to hide the little line. You can see it right there a little bit. Oh, yeah, but I, I thought that. that was really um, fastidious of him to uh, detail it in that manner. And I like the, the way he crossed. Basically, the pedestal is coming up through the table. There's wedges underneath these splines. And then the splines add to the decoration. 
uh, of the piece. So it's, it's just marvelous. This has had so much uh, oil put on it over the years, you can literally pour a glass of water on this table and it'll run off on the floor. Um, it was a wonderful place to have great conversation with his clients and visitors, and uh, uh, it was a, a great uh, source of conversation as well. The way he, we would do the side here is to set up a, um, uh, a large compass, a, a trammel point, and draw the arcs for the square round. And then Sam's equipment at that time was very simple. This is a piece that can be made in a very simple shop. His bandsaw was just a little 12 inch, or 14 inch bandsaw on an open frame. Uh, and so he would draw the lines and then cut right along uh, the edges and I would be on the outside holding that up so it didn't droop. And then after he cut all four sides, we'd go over to a 12 inch disc sander uh, and sand the edges right to the line. Then he would take the walnut and hold it underneath and we would scribe the line of the edge of the cork and then he would cut those out and fit them uh, just with a bandsaw and a, and a sander. So this is all hand-eye coordination uh, with very simple machinery. And it really, uh, it, it really shows Sam's amazing craftsmanship and his sense of design. So I love this piece. And so, Larry, you mentioned uh, something interesting about the legs. Could you tell us more about yeah, that? Yeah, there's another feature about this table that, that actually uh, we didn't notice until uh, just three or four years ago. Uh, underneath here, you'll notice that the pedestal, the point of the leg of the pedestal is pointing to the center of the arc. Throughout Sam's later career, those, the toe of the pedestal would always point to a corner, so this would be an open section. So it puzzled us as to why he uh, oriented the legs this way, and we still don't know, um, but it's just an unusual feature in terms of his uh, overall uh, design development. You know. Well, all right, thank you for sharing that information with me. That's great. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece, I love it. <laughs>